Super Mega Baseball 4 has arrived, and today I'll be giving you my initial impressions on the game and talk about what I think about this installment in a series that I've enjoyed a lot over the years. I was provided a code for this game from EA, but they will not be reviewing this video before it's posted, and they just simply gave me the code so I could check the game out. But if you followed my channel, you know I'm a big Super Mega Baseball fan. I have hundreds of videos on the first three games. I've been a really big fan of Super Mega Baseball ever since the first game because of its blend of arcade and simulation gameplay. Over the past 10 to 15 years, it's been rare to get sports games outside of the major releases with the biggest league licenses. But Super Mega Baseball has occupied this space that very few games attempt to even explore where their gameplay has really meshed together arcade and sim elements really well and creates a very good balanced gameplay experience that I think all fans of baseball games can find some enjoyment with. When EA acquired Metalhead, I wondered what they'd be able to do with Super Mega Baseball that they couldn't do before. And we got our answer with all of the legends that are now in this game. There is an entire Legends League now in this game, where originally we had the 20 fictional teams that Super Mega Baseball has had and has grown over the, the games. There are 8 Legend teams, and then also 8 teams that are themed around various creators that I'm sure many of you are familiar with. So, there's a lot of... YouTubers you'll know that are in this game, and then on top of that you have all of these legends at the same time, like Babe Ruth is in the game, you got Johnny Bench, Shane Victorino, there are so many players that I grew up watching and it's cool to see just different eras of baseball combined into this game. So there's a lot of fictional players, a lot of YouTubers, and then a lot of baseball legends from all different eras. And that really is the biggest thing that they've brought to this game, is the rosters. You got David Ortiz, who is now on the cover of the game, and is one of the more prominent players and legends here, with 98 power and 99 contact. You also have a lot of former twins, which is great for me to see. Just on this Mamotanks team alone, you got Joe Maurer. There's uh, my favorite baseball player ever in this game, Tori Hunter. And then you got LaTroy Hawkins, Joe Nathan. I think you could create a pretty good team here of just former Twins players. Super Mega Baseball has always done a really good job with the customization. And I've made my own teams and I've done series that are just custom teams all in one league. So if you like customization in your sports games and you want to go ahead and make uniforms and just design your own teams... That's really where this game shines. The customization is really good. When I sat down to play a couple games to see what I thought about this, I did not take long to get re-familiarized with Super Mega Baseball's gameplay. It felt very familiar having played a lot of Super Mega Baseball in the past. The gameplay is simple to approach, but uh, the ego system has always made it very easy to customize your experience. As I've said, this game meshes arcade and sim elements together, so you get a very fast-paced, action-packed game. But at the same time, you can easily run into games where the pitchers dominate, and it's a much more low-scoring game. There are still injuries. You're still going to have to work counts from time to time. To sum it up, especially because it has so much in common with the previous Super Mega Baseball games, it's just a really fun baseball game, and I enjoy the entire package that Super Mega Baseball has always offered. Now, there aren't any new hitting, pitching, or fielding mechanics. It's all very familiar. And I think my main criticism of the game to this point is just how familiar it can feel. I was wondering if maybe there would be a new approach to hitting or any changes there, maybe some more ratings, but it's more or less the same. And if you're familiar with the game, that might be a positive or a negative. And if you're brand new to the game, I think it's a very approachable game you can easily get into and have fun with. There are still some things that I would have liked to see added. For instance, there is no instant replay function. And 
after games, it's still just a very basic end of game sequence. And it would be nice to instead see highlights of some of the biggest moments of the game with nice camera angles. And honestly, it's a very visually appealing game. So I feel like there's a missed opportunity because the ballparks look great. I think they've really made the player models great. If you go back to the first game and just see how much progress was made, I wish there was a replay function and the ability to go back and check out the biggest moments of a game. When it comes to modes, of course, you got franchise mode, and I haven't really gotten into this to see what all new there is and uh, what's been changed from the previous game. You also have your just simple season mode where you play one year. You have elimination tournaments, which uh, I'm a fan of tournament modes in games, and they've really gone away. I grew up liking uh, like tournaments and that kind of thing back on the old Maddens. And the tournaments have pretty good customization where you can set the number of games per series you want to play and you can go up to eight teams it looks like. And then you can also do a, a shuffle draft which is basically a fantasy draft and given the roster that's in this game, I think fantasy draft was a really cool addition. You got all kinds of legends now in here combined with the uh, fictional players that they've always had so there's a lot available to choose from now it looks like here once you enter the draft there isn't the option of just picking from everybody they're giving us uh, eight choices it appears and then uh, for the second round it gives you eight more so it's a little limiting there in that it kind of boxes you into that but there is the elimination mode and then you can also use shuffle draft to create your own league if you're into online play, there is the pennant race mode, but I don't really play sports games online any longer. There's also online leagues. That's pretty cool. Where I think this game shines the most is in its customization. You can create your own leagues. You have all these preset teams, but you can also go ahead and create something brand new. Some of you might actually be good at using these in-game customization editors. I end up using just the uh, the base stuff most of the time. If you've never played Super Mega Baseball before, they have this difficulty setting that's just called Ego, and it's a number that runs from 0 up to 99. And every time you up this, it basically increases the difficulty, or if you drop it, it decreases it. You can also individually adjust the difficulties of hitting, pitching, fielding, and if there's something specific that you're struggling with, then you can go ahead and just adjust that if that's the one thing you want to do. I'll play a couple games, and this first one I'm going to play on an easier Ego, just so that if you're not really familiar with Super Mega Baseball, this is kind of how things look when you're first starting out. So I'm playing on just a 30 Ego, and everything in here is very fast that's one of the things that i love about this game is you can get through a nine inning baseball game in you know 30 to 45 minutes depending on really how much action there is and if you're having a, a lot of hits the faster the outs come the faster the games will go pitching is pretty simple you just use the right stick to select your pitch and then on screen you can get an idea of where that movement is going to go and the more skilled pitcher you have and we got Tom Glavin here then uh his curveball is gonna have a whole lot of break let's throw it here and it's rolled over to Chuck Knobloch there's another former twin Andre Dawson now at the plate like the previous Super Mega Baseball games there are the same attributes pitchers have velocity junk and accuracy very simple and then hitters will have power, contact, and speed. There is no like specific power against right-handed pitchers or left, but then you also have different traits that can make everybody a little bit different. So for instance, we have Tom Glavin who has an elite changeup, and then Andre Dawson does get a power boost versus lefties. So there are three simple ratings and then those traits. In addition in this game, they also introduced a team chemistry function. So now, each player has one of five chemistries, either competitive, spirited, disciplined, scholarly, and then crafty. And then depending on how many players fit each of those, you'll unlock different abilities or penalties based on your team construction. 
So it looks like we have a couple chemistry effects in play here, and we have easy jumps. When pitching, opposing base runners gain increased running speed when attempting to steal a base. So that's a negative effect. And then we have a positive effect called Rally Stopper, which is plus 10 velocity, junk, and accuracy when pitching with at least two runners on base. So that's the Rally Stopper effect. So there's a little bit more to think about, it looks like, when it comes to franchise mode. Well, let's see if we can get out of the first tier cleanly. There we go. Got strike two on the curve. Now, what I've been doing here is just hitting X and then trying to aim the reticle onto the target for the best accurate pitch. Otherwise, if, I, if you miss it, then... It either misses, or if it's in the zone, it becomes very easy to hit. There's also a way of pitching where it's a higher risk, higher reward, where you hold square, and then it, it's a lot quicker. you got to be faster with your targeting, but it's a, a risk-reward mechanic if you really want to try throwing a perfect pitch and you're willing to uh, take a risk to do it. We end up walking the batter. That's a lot of patience. And then Kirk Gibson... How many times have I seen the famous Kirk Gibson home run in my lifetime? Probably hundreds as a kid. Runner goes. Nice throw on to second, and we got him. We got Javi Lopez behind the dish. And now two strikes. Got him looking. And you'll notice the players are very animated. There is uh, a very lighthearted tone to the game. And that's how Super Mega Baseball has always been. We got Robin Yount to lead off. Now he's got the tough out trait. And that means he has 25 contact boost when batting with a two strike count. And then it looks like the uh, pitcher here, Mike Kruko, has minus 25 accuracy when he falls behind or has a three ball count. And hitting is pretty simple. Here on a lower ego setting, the ball comes in slower. You have more time to react. You simply aim your reticle, hit X, and that's all there is to it. If you want to do a simple swing, you hold square and then let go at the right time to uh, do a power swing. And that'll take just a little bit of uh, practice. And uh, I'm not used to playing on 30 Ego. The ball's coming in pretty slow, so. Strike out there. I'll play another game after this on a higher Ego, but I kind of want to make this video uh, pretty beginner friendly. There's a base hit into center field. Base running is pretty simple. Just aim the base runner you want to uh, target or hold the uh, L1, R1 buttons if you're on PlayStation to advance everybody got George Brett now at the plate and we're going the other way base hit left field two on with one down and then you'll notice too there is uh, a bit of a high score mechanic in this game as well so every time you really do anything you're gaining star points and the higher the ego you're on the more star points you will earn and it's just kind of a high score mechanic if you care to chase that. Sometimes it's fun when you're having a really good game to try to set yourself a new high score. And you can check out the leaderboards if you are uh, interested. He's trying to pitch me very carefully, but I'm not chasing that. And now he loses accuracy in three ball counts and ends up walking him. Mark Grace. Bases loaded. Let's do some damage. Oh, I got the hanging breaking ball and everything. This one's lined out at second. And now two down for Brett Butler. Played from 81 to 97. Not much power here. We'll go with a regular X swing. And we're going to line out at first base. And we're keeping up the strikeouts here with Tom Glavin. Now facing Ozzy Smith. He's got Magic Hands and Dive Wizard as his two uh, traits. Having two positive traits on one player is uh, pretty valuable. And he grounds it to short. 
Three up, three down there for Tom Glavin. It is uh, just a three-inning game here. I wanted this to be pretty quick. But you can play whatever length of game you uh, prefer. And we're going to right center with this one. That should be extras. Can we get our first run across? Uh, we'll hold them at third base. So I've been a really big fan of this game in the past. I expected to like this game if there weren't serious changes, and uh, I do like the game. I don't think I'll be doing a massive series, but maybe I can find something smaller that I can do because I, I do enjoy the game a lot. And I'd like to find something small, even like a little tournament or something like that. I also like to score in this game, too. Let's go the other way. That's going to land fair down the line. I noticed the sound effects as well in the game. There seem to be just a lot more of them. They're more noticeable. And uh, I do like that, especially when you make contact. No, I haven't up. made the, uh, the best contact yet. That's pretty good though base hit center field let's look to make this three nothing safe at the plate and they'll bring in a new pitcher now uh one of the things in this game you don't have to worry about is warming up relievers you just put in new pitchers when you want so there are no uh bullpen warm-up issues that's a base hit to left uh-oh now when errors happen you'll notice too they play the odds there until you kind of what percent chance that had to happen? So, errors, you know, they'll happen. Injuries will happen at the same time. And uh, one of the things I haven't really talked about is another important factor in gameplay, and that is mojo and pressure. So, at the top of the scoreboard, we see the pressure has one bar out of four. So, it's already a three-run game. They're not really in good shape, so I guess there's uh, not a lot of pressure here anyways. But... Based on players' mojo, they'll be affected negatively or positively by added pressure. So, if you have guys that are struggling, they will end up with mojo dropping. And it really helps simulate hot and cold streaks. So, players that are struggling, they're really not going to do well in those high-pressure situations. But players who are hot will be thriving. Baseball is all about hot and cold streaks, and that's going to be a big part of Super Mega Baseball as well. It always has been, and it's an element of the gameplay I've always enjoyed. And it can help make seasons feel differently from one another when certain players get hot or cold, and uh, sometimes they stay hot and sometimes they stay cold. Lined out at third base. And we got a base hit into right. Another run scores as we make it 5-0. Yep, new pitcher coming in, Goose Gossage. Let's uh, make a change of our own. Let's bring in uh, Sandy Alomar Jr. Probably worse hitting ratings, but I felt why not. Past the diving second baseman, another run scores. And that's going to end the inning, but we get six. Pretty good inning. We have ten hits. So let's make a pitching change here in the top of the ninth, or uh, top of the third, I guess. Tom Glavin had himself a great outing. Let's put, uh, let's go with Troy Percival. And swinging wildly, there's a strikeout for Percival. Just one more out to go. Uh-oh, looks like your pitcher is very tired. Already? He just got out there. I'm not sure if the stamina drain is faster when you're playing, like, these uh, games with less innings. But, uh, yeah, he's basically already drained after 16 pitches. But the game is over. And this is the end of game sequence. It's just pretty simple. I'd like there to be some highlights or just more to it. Because this is the end of game experience Super Mega Baseball has always had. Hey, we had a no hitter, I guess. Well, let's bump it up to 70 now and play with uh, David Ortiz and Hammer Long Ballo.
The two faces of Super Mega Baseball. I've been playing at a new stadium every time, and they've done a really good job with these stadiums. I think they look awesome. And they got varying dimensions as well in the outfield. Here's Vladimir Guerrero. Hit my first home run in this game with him. So you notice here on a 70 Ego that, uh, you know, pitches come in faster and the pitchers are better. So they're more around the edges of the strike zone. And I guess I looked at strike three there. That looked off the plate to me. You got Kyle Seeger, who just retired not long ago. Back in 2021. Lefty, lefty. That's okay. Yeah, that's, that's tougher, those lefty, lefty sliders on 70 Ego. And then popping one up here for the pitcher, who should have that one. David Ortiz. Gotta love Big Poppy being in the game. Yeah, that's coming in there pretty fast now. It's a different game. That's a Hammered to right center field. It's not going to leave as it goes to the deepest part of the park, and he'll have a two-out double. Also, if the game is ever moving at too fast of a pace for you, you can hold the right trigger, the strategize button, just to uh, slow things down because it does move at a pretty rapid pace if you let it. Into center field and lined out to Damian Rush. Let's see how uh, pitching is here. We got Bartolo Colon, by the way. Love that he's in here. Another former twin. For a short time, anyway. Boomer Platoon. The Sirloins are one of the, uh, the top fictional teams here in the game. So they've always had a, a ton of power. And they, they can be tough to handle on these higher difficulties. Popped up though, Ryan Braun coming in for the out. Ooh, I have never seen that camera angle before. That was a nice line drive for Cat Stanza. And here is Hammer Long Ballo. Want to see what happens if you try to pitch this guy in the strike zone with fastballs? Ooh, sometimes you get lucky on a foul. On the ground, there we go. I gave up some homers to him the first time I played against this team, but we get out of that inning pretty well. Into left field. That's a tough pitch to hit there inside. Joe Maurer, the former Minnesota twin. And of course, we gotta stay true to Joe Maurer. We cannot swing at the first pitch. Thank you for throwing it out of the zone. And we got to go the other way with Maurer, but it goes foul. And popped up right center field. Johnny Damon, I think we're making a change. We got to get Torrey Hunter out there. Favorite player of all time. Grew up watching him making amazing plays in center field. Torrey to center field, base hit. Can Ray Durham continue a little two-out rally here for us? Line drive and caught by Cook at second. If you're looking for more of a simulation feel to the game, I definitely look at some of these higher egos when you've kind of gotten used to things. Sometimes I, uh, I have the hitting difficulty higher than the pitching difficulty because at a lot of higher egos, the... The CPU is awful good if you're trying to throw uh, in the strike zone. And they can, they can do a lot of damage there. But we're not doing bad at all with Bartolo. Although back-to-back -back hits here for the Sirloins. We got one down. Preston Adonimus. We're at now three out of four pressure. And if this were like in a franchise where players, you know, had more uh, play data, then the, the mojo would matter more. Let's turn two and go top three. Guerrero in the center. That was an ugly swing. We got two strikes and off the glove. We'll have first and second. Two aboard with max pressure for Big Poppy. Oh no, lined out at short. 
One down now. Uh-oh. That's going to be lined out at first. Almost doubling us up. And now Ryan Braun with two away. Ah, not hit great. And out at first. So this is the final inning. We're going to try to force extras if we can. They'll bring in Mick Steele. And we're putting in our closer, Joe Nathan. Loved watching him close games back in the day. Very high on the all-time uh, saves leaderboard, by the way, as that's in the center. Imagine I lose the game here with Joe Nathan. That'd be embarrassing. Try to pitch him tough here on the edges. We're throwing 102 here. We got uh, some sort of velocity boost, it looks like. Runner goes, and it's past McGriff into right. First and second. Uh-oh, I threw that one away. I threw it on a play. Oh, no. And we lose. We just lost on an error. That's one way to do it. Not an earned run, at least. I didn't think he should get two bases on that. I don't know... If that's how it should be with the ball out of play there. He was at second. Let's play a little bit with these creator teams. Let's have the Mashing Monsters and the Canicorns. We'll play on 70 here again. Oh, I love that the fans have uh, the, the corn shirts as well. That's a nice touch. We got Alicia Woodrow here on the mound. Ooh, that one got hammered. Whoa, way up the middle. <laughs> that was close. It is uh, kind of more necessary on these tougher difficulties to throw some of these uh, power pitches with the square that are more high risk, high reward. In the center, King Shelfie. It's a lot of power there. We'll try a bunch of sliders away. We'll see if he offers any of this. Hoping for a ground ball. Oh, like that. Let's turn two. That's going the other way. We like that start. Oh, perfect bounce though to Hammerlong Ballo, but we're in at second base. Now we got Fuzzy at the plate. Hammered to center field, and this one is gone. Just got out. There we go. I had to hit a home run at some point. Uh-oh, this one is going way back. Oh my, it's up there in the second deck. Are you kidding me? 452. Okay, that was Juice Jackson with a monster home run. Oh, we're going to left center again. We've been liking it over here, but this one's off the wall. We're hitting the ball pretty well here. We got Giraffe Neck Mark trying to bring home a couple more runs. Uh-oh. Bad swing. Yeah, that's my bad. Hammerlong Ballos on this team. The creator teams have like a blend of creators and then the uh, legends and fictional players. So pretty cool teams overall and a lot of options. I know we're using one of the best pitchers in the game, too. I remember Alicia Woodrow from the past games. Struck out to her a few times. Strike three looking. Oh, we got that one. Nice job. Little man with a great play at second base. Ooh, this pitcher has some nasty stuff. Ooh, 103. Yeah, I'm not hitting that easily. Let's see if we can get a couple more here. We got Jock Sports. Facing one of the nastiest lefties in the game. I want to steal here. With a hit and run, maybe. Lined out. That one is hammered! Way back and gone. Home run for little man. 
Yeah, the left center gap is just treating us really well. That's 446, about as far as the upper deck home run. That one just had the, the higher trajectory. That's down the line and fair. We're getting at least one out of it. I think seven runs is probably enough. But maybe eight will really make it a sure thing. You can get into a real groove with this game, and that's why the Ego system is so nice. If it starts to get too easy or too difficult, you can just tweak it one or two points at a time, and if it's just the hitting that you want to adjust, you have that option. So hopefully eight is enough to win. I think we'll leave Woodrow out there. They haven't done a whole lot against her to this point. Good curve. Let's go back to the fastball. Strike three. Tapped it back, and Mark's going to make the play. One more. I hope I can find a small project to do with this game because I really do enjoy Super Mega Baseball 4. I don't plan on doing a huge series like I've done in the past, but there's a nice victory. And uh, let me know if you would like to see some Super Mega Baseball 4 content here on the channel. But my initial impressions are that it's uh, a very familiar game if you've played Super Mega Baseball in the past. It's fun. The Legends are a great addition. I've seen that there are some improvements to franchise mode, but I haven't really explored those a ton. I do wish there was a little bit more feature-wise, like I mentioned, instant replay, post-game highlights, maybe the ability to save some of those clips would be nice. And then also, I feel like a home run derby in this game would be a lot of fun to mess around with, especially with the roster that's in here. There's still great modes, but I feel like, you know, those are the things that I would mainly say uh, I wish we're here but aren't but that is going to do it for this video everybody a nice look here at Super Mega Baseball 4 and again if you want to see more of it on the channel let me know please leave a like if you enjoyed the video subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time have a great day